Welcome back to DIY My Way. In the last video, I installed this phone holder on my tractor, but the one thing I'm missing is a way to charge it. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. After searching Amazon for the many choices of automotive USB charger sockets, I settled on this Yon Hand model. It operates on 12 to 24 volts. It has two quick charge 3.0 USB ports. The total power output is 36 watts or 18 watts per port. And one of my favorite features is the blue LED voltmeter that lets me keep an eye on the health of my tractor's battery. It's described as waterproof, but there's no IP rating given. The body is made of aluminum alloy with a face and nut made of PVC. It's just over 2 inches deep and 1.13 inches wide. The included cable is 23.7 inches long. It is certified by UL, CE, and Rose. The current price on Amazon as of the release of this video is $13.99. There's a link to it in the video description. However, there are many makes and models to choose from, so shop around to see which one has the features you're looking for. The unit comes in a small, unassuming round box and contains the charger itself and the cable with inline fuse. The rubber lid has a window to see the voltmeter and tabs that seal the USB ports. My first consideration is where I'm going to mount this thing on the dash, because it means drilling a hole somewhere on my tractor. It's the first time I have done that, I actually drilled a hole into the dash or anything, so I'm a little bit, uh, need to think about that very carefully. So one of the options I thought of was putting it right here, right here in the center. I can see it through the steering wheel be able to read the display and the wires can run off of there. Uh, there is room under there, I've already checked. Or I can put it here, right above the switch. But one of my concerns there was uh, that it, I didn't hit it with my knee when I was turning around to look at my implement if I'm doing something on a three-point. Uh, in the past, I would turn on the, inadvertently turn on the headlights or the emergency blinker, but after Playing with it, I think right there keeps it out of my knee because my knee comes to right about here. So if I put it right there, it would be out of the way. So it's between there and there. And I'm leaning toward here. One reason for that is this has got a you know, quote unquote waterproof cap to it. But if I put it up here, it would be facing up. Normally my tractor stays in the shop, is not out in the weather. But if I had to wash the tractor down or something, I'm a little bit afraid that the water could seep up in there and into the USB ports. However, if it's like this, it's less likely that gravity will take the uh, water straight into the USB ports. So just in consideration for the, the charger itself, I think I might go here. First, I use the nut from the charger and a Sharpie marker to mark where to drill. By the way, I already checked to make sure there's enough room behind the hole to mount the charger. I found out by removing the steering column boot and checking with my hand. Plenty of clearance back there. That's great. All right. Time to drill. I start by making a pilot hole with a small bit. It's pretty thin thinner than I thought. Then I use a 1 and 1 inch hole saw to finish the hole. Does it fit? That's going to be perfect. Perfect isn't what I was going for, but it'll have to do. The wiring harness that comes with it is not going to cut it for me because it's got this little bitty non-standard inline fuse, just like a barrel fuse instead of an automotive fuse. So I'm going to use my auxiliary fuse box that I installed in a previous video and tie into it using a 10 amp standard automotive fuse. And that's what this needs is a 10 amp fuse. 
My wiring harness is made from a 22 inch length of two conductor 16 gauge wire I bought on Amazon. To make it up, I'll use three spade connectors and one ring connector. And I have a 10 amp blade fuse for my auxiliary fuse box. I crimp the two spade connectors to the end of the cable that will connect to the charger. On the fuse box end, I crimp a spade connector to the red positive wire. Followed by a ring connector to the black negative wire. The positive and negative terminals on the charger are marked and the positive terminal is brass colored. I connect my wiring harness accordingly, with the positive wire to the brass terminal and the negative wire to the other. I put the fuse box into the harness through the hole. Slip the nut over the harness from the back side. Then feed the harness through the hole in the nut. I push the charger into the hole and tighten the nut. There we go, great. Now to put the steering wheel column boot back on. Next it's time to connect the harness to my auxiliary fuse block. This is the ground lug where the negative ring connector will attach. The positive spade connector will connect here at the fuse number 4 output terminal. I remove the nut and lock washer from the ground lug. Put the ring connector on. Then put the lock washer and nut back on and tighten it up. Sorry I didn't have a better camera angle. I remove the fuse block cover. Connect the positive spade connector to the output terminal. To Then insert the 10 amp fuse and put the cover back on. Alrighty then, let's see if this thing works. When I turn the key to the first position, the voltmeter reads 11.8 volts, which is low to begin with, and falls to 8 volts while cranking. That's a good indication that I may need to replace the battery soon. It slowly climbs to over 14 volts. By the way, the display doesn't flicker to the human eye.
Now I test the USB charging ports. Well, the first one works. And so does the second one. Great. I might get a one foot charging cord, but for now the shortest one I have is three feet, so I'll wrap the excess around the phone holder to keep it out of the way. So now I have a way to charge my phone when it's in my phone holder. And, as a plus, I have a voltmeter for my battery. So what do you think of this solution? Would you do it this way or some way different? Let me know in the comments how you might go about it differently, depending on how your tractor is made. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you'd click that like button, leave a comment, and by all means, please subscribe. If you want to know when I post new videos, click that little bell. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.